Oh, right. Okay. Sorry for the very, uh, if anyone happens to be here already, sorry for the very abrupt start to this stream. I am running a little bit of late on account of um, being stuck at work just a little bit late. I haven't even, I haven't even started my, actually where is my remote control for the thing? Oh, giddy goose. Right. Um, let's, 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 let's get some light on. Oh God, that's, that's, that's piercing. That's piercing. Right, okay. So, um, yeah, sorry. We are um, suffering from a little bit of chaos. Um, yeah, we are we are starting with a little bit chaos to, um, to the start of the stream. There's been no preparation. There has been nothing going on. This has just been, oh, oh dear. In retrospect, I think this is probably, we're, we're probably going to start doing streams at maybe uh, seven o'clock, not six o'clock, because that's too tight for me getting um, home from work. So before we get too far into things, let's just share the wonderful news with everybody that we're now live. Okay, so what are we doing today? Uh, today we're doing Reanimation Inc, which is a game where you get to play as part of the um, ambulance service. Uh, and by that I mean you're literally, it's literally just in the back of the ambulance. So unlike other games where we maybe talk like, um, Notroff, which is where you play as a fire service, or perhaps GTA with the mods where you play as a police service, um, this isn't really about patrolling and responding. This is the person's in the back of the ambulance, and, uh, you, uh, have to <laughs> keep them alive, um, for as long as possible. So we're just going to, I'm just going to do one quick check to make sure that all the settings are as they should be. I'm just a little bit cautious. Yes, okay, right. <laughs> I was wondering why the game was having no audio. Right, okay. Audio is coming through on um, OBS. It's coming through in my ears. Perfect. So let's get, let's get, let's get this bad boy started. I'm, I, I. I'm so sorry for the amount of unpreparedness that I'm in. It, it gets worse, actually. It does get worse because um, I wanted to actually, uh, you know, I'm going to do some nerd shit right here and get some revision under my belt <laughs> um, so that I... Uh, that I could, uh, well, because we're now, we're on phase four of the game's career, of which there's only five stages. Um... And basically what this means is there's a lot of shit that I don't know, I can't remember the answers to, stuff like poisons and things, so, you know, we'll, we'll have to see. We've uh, got in the comments, we've got red boy, red boy, this is in fact a yellow boy, if I go to the, if, does it, oh no, it doesn't help me actually. Uh, we, yes, we in fact have a yellow boy, um, of our generic, non-nation specific, non-organization specific ambulance service. So, I think I've done enough pandering. We've got three people joining us. Hello. Um, yeah. Well, let's go and, let's go and save some lives. Oh yes, yeah, now ca caveat for people who, actually hang on, right. Oh. Okay, person has chest pain. Nice. Actually, I'll explain what I was going to explain after this. Let's deal with this person with chest pain. I can already hear that he's not happy about his situation. And he's got, he's got, you know, <laughs> uncomfortable noises. Um, so chest pain, with you know, conscious, without other symptoms, probably not looking at <laughs> cardiac arrest, uh, you know, because he's not dead. Um... But we are probably thinking um, heart attack, myocardial infarction, um, or angina. So let's have a look and see. So looking at the graphy boy, I'm not seeing any indications of myocardial inf infarction. So what we've got here is um, normal sinus rhythm, P wave, QRS, comp QRS complex and T wave, they're all fine. Um, if you were looking at a myocardial infarction, you would probably be suspecting um, that 
um, the RST part of the wave would be malformed. It's not, so we're not thinking heart attack. But nevertheless, he is in a lot of pain. Let's test and see if he's got angina. So we're going to give nitroglycerin um, in a little spray that goes through the mouth. And if this is the correct treatment for him, it will work like magic. His pain will go away in rather rapid fashion. And he's not in pain. There we go. So just like that, his... Well, his, there was nothing wrong with his obs anyway. Um... Uh, but he's now not in pain. So we'll just keep monitoring him for a very short while. Um, just to make sure that his obs are stabilized. I'm totally not doing stuff off screen. Like the true professional. I, I'm honestly, I'm, uh, yeah, like I was, I was asking questions. So I have a Discord um, channel for those who may be interested in joining. I can push the magic buttons. Which uh, should, if my keyboard hasn't broke itself again, should be showing the buttons for Discord. <laughs> it is in the in the right underneath my face. Um, so yeah, basically in my Discord there, I was asking the question of what time would be the best time um, to have a stream, and um, yeah, everyone was happy-ish with six o'clock. Um, but yeah, it's just it, it's just proving too chaotic. Um, he is stable, angina, he's been treated for his angina, not a life-threatening condition, so we're gonna leave this boy at home. Which we have now done. So, um, that was angina. Yep, okay, so we didn't miss any diagnosis, we completely treated the condition, and he wasn't in any risk, so peachy, we made the right call through and through. Day 111. I've done 111 cases in this game. I think I've got a not bad ratio, to be honest. Eight, eight, you know, yeah. It's quite a good success rate, actually, for an emergency ambulance service. But I'm going to say that now, and the next person is going to hark it. Strokes can be really hard. Oh, I forgot to say what I was going to say. I think I saw it. Anyway. Ooh, fire, suffocation. Okay, fires are um, dangerous because obviously you are having, you know, if somebody's trapped in a building, they have prolonged exposure to a non-oxygenated um, atmosphere, potentially. Um, so you can asphyxiate from the lack of oxygen, um, but also, um, you know, the gases and fires can become, you know, superheated. The air around you can become exceptionally hot. And if you were to breathe in that incredibly heated air, you can also blister um, your airway, uh, which can blister shut. So we basically make a couple of passes um, at restoring the airway. And don't worry, by the way, this this is paused while this menu is open for the first time. Um, we'll, we'll make a couple of passes at getting um, the body oxygenated. Um through normal ventilation and if that doesn't pan out um, what we'll do is we will go for an emergency tracheoptomy um, which is where you go right through the neck so let's see what the condition is unconscious pot oh, oh, oh never mind right let's go straight to hospital uh, we're gonna go ahead and get a venous access because we're gonna need medication so what we've got here on the top left in the rhythm is um, ventricular tachycardia. Uh, tachycardia means your heart is beating fast. Ventricular tachycardia is where your heart is not beating to a proper pattern. So as a result, we're doing chest compressions and CPR. We're going to start this as well. Um, so defib's about to go. We're going to clear. And while that, we're just letting that analyze, we're going to start giving medications. Oh, hey, whoops. Accidentally hit compressions. We've actually restored sinus rhythm, so we're still waiting on the mechanical. Oh, never mind. <laughs> We've now no longer restored sinus rhythm. Um, right, so we'll do two rescue breaths and we'll continue our compressions. So defib's charging again because we did have sinus rhythm briefly and we went to ventricular tachycardia, which isn't great. And we're just going to do. I just did a short number of compressions because I want to. I'm conscious that the oxygenation is incredibly low. Uh, we've got nothing. Okay, we're gonna go, we are gonna go, oh no, I need to wait. Okay, we're starting to get into the territory of, um, uh, ventricular fibrillation, which is where the heart doesn't have enough strength 
to keep itself going. Okay. So we've performed the emergency tracheotomy. We'll do two more breaths and we're going to keep going with compressions. We're still 100 seconds away from hospital. We're not getting any oxygenation in at all. And the brain's just about to take over to death. So yeah, that's right enough. Right enough, we had one where they couldn't survive. Oh, we got, we're got we getting a little bit of oxygenation now. But it's too, too little too late. So, um, yeah. The damage to that person's airway was uh, too severe for us to be able to... To deal with it. Um, so what that was was um, was asphyxia. Oh, and CO2 poisoning. Oh yeah, of course. That's I, I forget I'd unlocked that actually because it, it's quite annoying that you encounter fires at one level of training, so you get half the symptoms that you have to deal with, and then um, yeah, you unlock them all. So um, yeah, CO2 poisoning. That was. That was something that we missed. So we get a penalty boy for that, and by that I mean we get zero doers, which is fine, because we've got a lot. But we do add one more to the dead total, which is which is unfortunate. Um, yeah, so CO2 poisoning, um, there is a, a test that you can do for that. Um, which, yeah, we probably wouldn't have done anyway. Um, because realistically, yeah, unless they had like a life critical bleed, um, if somebody's heart is not pumping um, or they are not breathing, your your only priority is, is really um, CPR. Uh, I was <laughs> I was going to explain something around ago about this game. Oh yes, that was it. Right. So before we get back into it, if you're wondering. If you're wondering why this might be functioning slightly better for me than it is for you, this game is called Reanimation Inc. Um, it is available on Steam, but the Steam version is actually dysfunctional. This button here that lets you buy the bandaguez um, doesn't work. <laughs> so what I actually did was I, I've still paid for the game, um, but I have paid for it on um, Google Play. And I'm using an Android phone emulator on my PC um, to, you know, for, for viewing purposes. So, let's try and not kill our patient again. And we'll see what we get. Yeah, so, if we have a... Actually, I probably, actually hang on. Okay. Well, right, okay. Um, patient had a car accident. Pale skin... Uh, pale skin... We're possibly thinking of um, blood loss um, and nausea, dizziness, and headache. Probably thinking of traumatic brain injury. Um, so basically, straight away, if we're suspecting traumatic brain injury, we're going to evaluate their state of consciousness, but they might not be breathing for themselves. So straight away, we're going to get ready on mechanical ventilation. We're going to go straight to hospital. Um, and then as, so there's, you, you've got effectively two pairs of hands in, in your actions. Um, so one person will do the mechanical ventilation, getting that ready. Uh, the other one will control any bleeding if there is heavy bleeding. So straight to hospital, lots of blood, heavy bleeding, oh god, right, okay, no, not research. Action, stop bleeding, mechanical ventilation, right, okay. So at the moment, the blood loss is dropping incredibly quickly, we're going to start a blood infusion as well. And the heart's starting to do funky things because it doesn't have enough in the circulation. Um, but it is maintaining sinus rhythm, but tachycardic, the blood pressure is also coming down. We're going to prepare to give medication, just in case it becomes necessary, and we're now going to take over breathing for the patient, although, because as you can see there, the, rest, the breathing rate is zero at the moment. They are not breathing for themselves, but they do have good oxygenation. Okay, so I'm just doing mechanical ventilation. Um, we've given them a lot of blood. Oh, we need more blood. Um, and we are, yeah. So they're still not breathing for them. Oh, but they're conscious. But they're not breathing for themselves. This is the result of the traumatic brain injury. So we're going to continue with the mechanical ventilation. The extra blood that we've put into their system, it's restored their blood pressure back up to what is, in fact, actually they're almost, 
<laughs> they've almost uh, got too high blood pressure, to be perfectly honest with you. Um, but they're chewing through... In fact, actually, do you know what we're going to do? We're going to give... Um, oh, crap. What, what is the one? No. Used to the salt? Nope. Not... There's a medication that we give successfully. I'm forgetting what it is. Increased blood clotting. There we go. That's it. Uh, right, we need more blood again. So we, we're going to give a medication. Um, I, I'm not familiar with that familiar with my um, medications. Um, certainly, in my experience of dealing with traumatic injuries, I assisted in giving tranexamic acid. Uh, which is another blood clotting agent, and what that does is it, it makes the blood more likely to form blood clots, um, which can then help stop bleeding. He's in an average amount of pain, he's still chewing through blood like nobody's business, but we're now only three quarters of a minute, what an awkward way to say the time, we're 40 seconds away from hospital, um, so we're thinking, oh, we're going to start giving him more blood. Uh, we've controlled the bleeding well, we're giving excess, um, so the game does highlight the fact that this is a game, though. Um, and um, in an ambulance setting, you wouldn't give blood to replenish fluids, you would give saline, uh, because with bloods, you've, you've kind of got to know what, um, what blood type the patient is, otherwise you could be putting them at risk in other areas, unless you have universal donor blood, um, but that's generally not carried in ambulances. If you uh, if you hear some banging, by the way, I'm not being shot at. It's just um, it's obviously the day after Guy Fox Day, and there's still lots of people lighting off fireworks. So, right. So, what we had there was a traumatic brain injury, internal bleeding, I believe. Well, no, it was normal bleeding. Uh, yeah, right. Okay, fine. Normal bleeding, but not internal. Okay, fine. Whatever. But another one to the save tally, so happy days. Cool. Anything in comments? Nope, nothing in comments. Happy days. That means we can resume. I forgot what I was going to do. Ooh, patient was attacked with a weapon. Oh, bother. Okay. So we've got lots of symptoms here, and we're familiar with three of them already. Nausea, dizziness, and headache. Um, we're thinking of traumatic brain injury. So again, the patient might not be... Um, uh, breathing for themselves, and um, so we're gonna go. So same protocol as last time. Um, we're going to do a um, assessment of the bleeding. If they're bleeding heavily, we'll need to deal with that first of all. Then we'll check the airway. Are they breathing for themselves? If not, can we breathe for them? Is their airway clear? Um, and then we'll start moving to the other stuff as well. The complication to this is the last symptom, chest pain when inhaling. Um, and given that they've been attacked with a weapon, we don't know what weapon, but possibly it's been something used to, to puncture the skin. Um, so as a result, we're thinking if they've been stabbed in the chest, there is a potential for what's called a pneumothorax, um, which is... Uh, commonly known as a collapsed lung. So your pleural cavity, the space in which your lungs sit, is at a lower pressure than atmospheric. So if air gets into that cavity, um, the lungs aren't used to being in the presence of atmospheric pressure. Air, it pushes against them, they collapse, they can't function, you can't breathe. So you have to do a process where you inject the pleural cavity and remove the air. Now, somebody pointed out previously that this game kind of does this a wee bit wrong. In reality, what you would do is you would kind of leave a drain in place, but this game does it via syringe only, so you have to keep repeating the process, which is a bit annoying, but whatever. So, deep breaths. Let's go straight to hospital. Evaluation of bleeding. No obvious signs of bleeding. We're going to start with the mechanical ventilation because already we can see their pleth function and blood oxygenation is coming down. Their oxygenation is not happy and their heart is doing funny things. Um, yeah, the heart is doing funny things. Right, okay. Um, we're going to... Uh, we're just going to do a puncture of the pleural cavity straight away because... Their oxygenation is coming down quite a lot. Got the mechanical ventilation in. 
So we're just going to try that. And straight away, as soon as the plural puncture was completed, you can see that the um, the pleth graph is shooting up to um, 100, 100%. So this this blue graph here, um, it uses a technique called photo pleth plethymorphous. There's an extra bit to it. It's basically yeah. Photopleth something scopy, and it's basically using. There we go. I'm gonna to have to repeat the uh, plural cavity already. Geez, uh, still no signs of bleeding, which is good. Um, and basically, um, people would. Oh, hey, they're conscious. Happy days. People commonly uh, know a non-hospital version as a pulse oximeter, um, and what it does is it lets us see their pulse, and it also lets us see the oxygenation going through the the blood. Um, which is very handy and uh, the more complex version so I have one that is a more complex um, version um, actually shows this little graph here um, and is giving you an indication of how effectively your heart is beating um, oh, n not your heart is beating, but how effectively your circulatory system is working. So the overall number is important, but also how sharp the sawtooth function is. So as you can see here, it's starting to diminish quite a bit. And as we are doing the mechanical ventilation, uh, they are not getting oxygen. They're not getting oxygenated. So we're going to have to repeat the puncture of the pleural cavity yet again. And as we do this, like you look at it now, the, the function is really, really coming down. Um, so it's now complete. And you can see there is a massive um, increase in the numbers. We're back to 100% oxygenation. And you can see how deep the teeth of the sawtooth is and that indicates to me that the cardiovascular system is currently performing well. It's not hitting a hundred percent so not as good as it could be but I mean it's not gonna be dying anytime soon at least. Uh, yeah so basically all we're doing they're still not breathing for themselves as a result of the traumatic airway um, tra traumatic airway traumatic um, brain injury um, but we are keeping their blood oxygenation good to keeping them very much alive by use of mechanical ventilation so that was a traumatic brain injury combined with a pneumothorax so we're happy enough with that if you're wondering perhaps um, so I did I actually did this as part of my 24-hour charity live stream which is good fun um, and I explained a lot of things, uh, I explained a lot of things there, and I've actually not done this since, which is why I'm a, a wee smidgen rusty. I forget where I was going with this. Uh, yeah, I've completely forgot where, why I started that entire sentence, to be honest. Um, patient survived. Cool. Happy days. Let's do some more life saving. So yeah, basically this is, this is, this is, this is what the game is. Slower you drive, more accurate diagnosis. Oh, hello. I forgot. Yeah, actually, you know what? It doesn't. It doesn't matter, right? Oh, okay. Nice. So we've got a uh, we've got a lot of symptoms. Patient had a car accident. Um, so you're thinking now traumatic injuries. Um, and we've got a lot of symptoms, so we're probably going to be dealing with a lot of conditions here. Nausea, dizziness, headaches, say it with me now, uh, we probably know what we're dealing with, and it's going to be traumatic brain injury. So once again, good chance that they're not going to be breathing for themselves. Cold sweat and pale skin combined with vomiting blood um, is a sign of blood loss via internal um bleeding so we're gonna have to take emergency action um about that uh also car accident mechanism me me mechanism of injury might mean um that we are uh, looking at normal external bleeding um as well yeah yeah you know yeah so it's gonna be hard to tell so we're basically just gonna have to um throw things at everything and then deal with that um and then the, the the one that we haven't mentioned is um 
dyspnea, um, which is pain when breathing. So once again, um, you know, traumatic injury, you have, um, there is in fact a risk that your bones can break and your bones can actually pierce uh, the lung, uh, pierce the pleural cavity, external things can pierce the pleural cavity. So once again, we're also thinking about um, pneumothorax or possibly more extensive injuries to the lungs. So we're gonna have to act very, very quickly on this. So let's load myself up with uh, energy. Take a deep breath and let's try and save him. To hospital! Stop the bleeding! Man, mechanical ventilation. Uh, start in blood infusion. Okay. So, bleeding stopped. Venous access. Because we're gonna need to. Oh, we've got spicy bleeding. Do 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 Right, okay, medication. We're gonna give the blood clotting agent. We're gonna do mechanical ventilation for the patient because he's currently rocking a not very good. Thing. We're going to puncture the pleural cavity just in case. Um, at the moment, we are not getting any oxygenation in. Heart's probably about to go tachycardic. So at the moment, well, sorry, it is tachycardic at the moment. Right, okay. Uh, so this is not going well. Once this is done, we're going to... So at the moment, we've got no blood pressure. There is very little blood in the system. We've now gone into ventricular tachycardia, so we're going to big in CPR. Uh, we've secured as much bleeding as we can. I'm going to give another dose of the blood clotting agent, um, and we're just going to have to keep trying to get blood back into this guy's system. So we're just going to keep doing a little bit of compressions. And shock him, but there's nothing really left to shock. <sighs> yeah, there's absolutely no blood in the system at all. Um, so without blood in the system, I can't oxygenate the blood. Um, we're just going to have to keep trying to do this. With the medication. This is going to be very, very unlikely that we can save him, if we're honest. There's too many injuries. The injuries are way too severe. There's no, yeah, he's bleeding. He's bleeding quicker than I can. I can get blood back into him. Uh, and no oxygenation. We've now gone from ventricular tachycardia into ventricular fibrillation. We'll very soon be hitting um, complete asystole. In fact, we're border like, yeah, we are, bar we are asystole now. No activity in the heart, no blood in the system. Patient is unrecoverable, unfortunately. Um, so I think we did all the right steps. The injuries were just way too severe. Um, the blood loss was just way too extensive. We kept on pumping him with more blood and we gave him as much clotting agent as he could handle. Um, it still wasn't enough. As it says, not every patient can be saved. Just because a patient has died, the sad reality is it doesn't mean you've not done your job right. It just means their injuries are, are too severe. So, mm, sad. So what we had there was um, internal bleeding, uh, traumatic brain injury. I think normal bleeding as well. It'll probably shout at me for this. No. Um, and I suspect, possibly, uh, pneumothorax as well. Yeah, okay, right, not not pneumothorax, but it was a good enough thing. So I lose a little, well, actually, you know, the patient died, so I don't get any dealer anyway. So we're back to 90% survival ratio. Mm. And you can see all of the symptoms that, um, that were, were possible, were possible there. Um, yeah, actually, hang on, no, let's uh, skip through all that. So, yeah, so the, so basically the way this game works is it doesn't unload everything on you at once. Um, doesn't load all the medications on you at once if you get the PC version or if you pay for the versions, uh, which can be a little bit difficult to look at, but you, you, you'll get the swing of it eventually. Um, yeah, bloody boys. 
So, um, yeah, so of course, so the one thing I wanted to look for... Uh, so, yeah, just gonna have a look at this one. So, shortness of breath, cool. Uh, so, it's got COPD, internal bleeding is one of the ones that we've had to deal with. Could possibly have done, actually... Um, with the cryo package, come to think of it, that was the one thing that we didn't do. Uh, we've got carbon. Yeah. Uh, so I'm just looking at this one with the poisoning, um, just because we've actually not. I think I've dealt with in, in all a hundred and uh, <laughs> hundred and eight patients I'd, I've dealt with. I've actually not. Um, encountered, uh, I've encountered one case of poisoning and I got it wrong. And the patient was fine, but, you know, nevertheless, I got it wrong. So that wasn't really great. So anyway, yeah, let's go back to, uh, oh, okay, this is, so this is interesting. So the patient feels bad, uh, but there's no known symptoms. Um, this might mean because the patient is unable, unable to describe the symptoms or they've been found in circumstances that are unknown. So for example, somebody has a car crash, even if the patient's unconscious, usually somebody around to go, yep, been in a car crash. So we've got a complete unknown here. Um, now if they've uh, stumbled on the patient, uh, this could mean um, that they are actually in cardiac arrest. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at the ECG and see what we're rocking with right here. Eh, fine. Fine. Okay. So in that case, um, while, so it takes a minute for the breathing rate to kick in. So the fact it says zero at the moment doesn't necessarily mean he's not breathing. So he feels bad, he is conscious. Um, he's not in any pain. His temperature is okay. Heart rate's fine, blood oxygenation is meh. All right. Um, Systolic and diastolic pressures are fine, mean arterial pressure is fine, respirate, fine. Um, so let's continue our investigations. Patient felt bad, you can sometimes feel a bit funny, you know. So let's go through the emergency things of looking if uh, there's signs of a stroke. There's absolutely no signs of a stroke, which is peachy. Um, glucose level could be if they're diabetic, that they are having um, issues with their blood sugar level. Um, it cetera. Aha! And I was right. So glucose level is decreased hypoglycemia. Um, oh, hi. So, uh, oh, hello. Um, so we're going to give... Oh, yeah, we need, we, well, we need access first. And actually, um, so hypoglycemia, we're going to start heading into hospital, actually. Hypoglycemia is where you have not enough glucose in your system, and it can lead um, to a, a, a diabetic coma and ultimately death. Dude's now unconscious, not doing so great with the, um, with the stuff, so we're going to prepare man manual ventilation because he's currently not breathing. We'll give him some glucose. And get ready to take over his breathing, his, his heart's doing funny things, as it would do. Um, glucose is coming in, so all, all of the, everything in this game, it is a game. It's got lots of fun realisms, um, but ultimately, you know, it is a game. So things happen at a very increased pace. So we're going to take over uh, mechanical ventilation of this patient. And you can see already with the increase of glucose to the system, we're getting a lot of function back to the cardiovascular symptoms. The pleth function is coming up. We're now at 90, mid 90s percent um, O2 sats, which means I'm not worried at all. We're going to continue going to hospital just because uh, having an episode of no breathing Diabetics tend to know their condition, but that doesn't mean that they don't need help, of course not. So we'll, we'll take them to hospital, get checked over. They're currently very stable, however. Uh, still, well, they're now, they've now woken up and they are breathing on their own. So we're going to discontinue mechanical ventilation uh, and just watch to make sure that the patient is stable. Um, and by that, I see that I have a message. So... <laughs> Oh uh, dear. Right, okay. Um, yeah, that's fine. So, yeah, say I'm going to sit there and watch the sats and then immediately like, look over here at a different screen. 
They're looking pretty stable at the moment though, so I'm happy to just do the next minute on fast forward. Yeah, everything's looking pretty stable. So that little injection of glucose um, went a long way to restoring them back to uh, back to a good position. Um, so what that was was hypoglycemia. Now there's a misspelling here. So the um, the guy who made this game is not a native English speaker, uh, hence why you sometimes get a little bit of weird grammar things like is ready. Uh, and also we've got hypoglycemia rather than hypoglycemia, but it's hypoglycemia, which is what this patient had. That was what we treat him for. He was alive when we brought him to hospital, which is always peachy. Um, and that's another one saved underneath our belts. Cool. Shall we get some upgrades? Let's get, um, let's get, let's, let's upgrade our heart start. Um, for defrib oh, that's an expensive defibrillator. That's actually most of our money. Let's maybe question that. Uh, well, what else do we need? Yeah, I've not really increased any of this, but I think actually, I think actually getting one of these would be quite helpful. So we've increased our, you know, our manly manliness <laughs> um, for uh, having better endurance. So uh, actually doing CPR on in real life on a real person um, is is exhausting. Um, and one of the things that you are required to do, uh, certainly in the United Kingdom, as part of a first aid assessment, um, is that you have to prove you can do um, first aid for at least a couple of minutes. And it is, it is a very exhausting thing. Um, so, yeah, so getting more endurance. <laughs> this is a game, remember. Uh, you can't just, you know, well, I suppose. I suppose in some roundabout ways you can pay £500 to people and suddenly are a bit stronger, you know. Read into that gym membership or steroids, whichever you prefer. Um, we've already got enough medications, we've already got mm, reasonably good ambulance, so let's let's go. So let's do some more patients. We've now got more people joining us on Twitch. Hello everybody, great to have you um, aboard. This has been a wee bit of a chaotic start to the stream, but uh, we're now, what? Oh god, we're nearly 40 minutes into it. Jeez, time's flown. Aha! So, we've been phoned to a patient who feels bad. They have numbness and confused speech. We're immediately thinking um, stroke, which is an emergency. Um, so we're going to go into here and they are unconscious. So we're actually just going to start the process of going to hospital. We're going to go for venous access straight away. Um because I need to deliver clot boss, clot, clot, uh, does not dissolve, no, so this is a, um, yeah, so we want this one, um, so we're going to deliver medication, um, which helps, um, what does it do? Yeah, it improves circulation of the brain. Uh, we're also going to administer um, a thing that to dissolve blood clot. So what stroke is, is a blood clot in the brain. He's actually not breathing for himself. So we're going to start the intubation process and get ready to mechanically ventilate. We are on the way to hospital. Boo, no red boys. No, this is a yellow boy, unfortunately. Um, yeah, so we're struggling for oxygenation. Hopefully that will resolve itself soon. We're going to... We're going to... Uh, so we're going to start breathing for the patient, which we are now doing. So the, the the reason why, even though we're starting to get oxygenation back, the reason why the, the brain function is still ticking down uh, at the top and wouldn't it be great in real life to have this kind of indication. But um, in the case of a stroke, you cannot, at the ambulance level, get rid of a stroke. There's some medications that can be administered to help bust, um, which... Um, blood clots in the brain which is what we're trying to do um, but ultimately without emergency intervention at, in a hospital setting a patient will not recover so it doesn't matter what I do now this bar will never go up as we've seen happen with other patients in other situations um, we have to just stop it going down uh, and we do this by continuously administering um, medication to dissolve blood clots. There's no risk of bleeding. Um, if he was, we wouldn't be able to do this because then we would make the blood so thin that the blood wouldn't stay in his body, which is dangerous in a different way. Um, 
So I'm happy to administer as much of that uh, as we can. So we're now at the point where his lungs are, are now fine. Um, we're now breathing for him, which is keeping his blood oxygenation high. We're maintaining normal sinus rhythm. Heart, heart's a little bit fast, but not unreasonably so. Um, but he is fully unconscious, unable to breathe for himself. Um, so we're just trying to keep him alive until we get to hospital, which is 30 seconds away. Oi, okay. Red boy, red boy. You know, I should really do a live stream of um, Notroff 112 so you guys can get your fill of uh, of, of um, red boys. I know you don't know, oh, hello, Hart did something funny. I know you guys don't know what that is, because uh, I, I know who you are. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a firefighting simulator where you get to play as the red boys. Aha, right, okay, so that was pretty straightforward. That was one of them strokes. Um, so you can see here there's lots of condition. Um, blood clots can actually affect you in, um, in multiple, uh, in multiple places. Um, so you can have a stroke, uh, which is a blood clot in the brain. Well, there's two kinds of stroke. Um, there's a hemorrhagic stroke, which is where the brain, uh, is losing functionality as a result of bleeding within the brain. Um, or an ischemic stroke. Um, which is where uh, the blood flow to the brain is blocked by a blood clot. So that's a stroke. That's what we know as a stroke. Um, there is a pulmonary embolism, which is where the lungs are struggling to work because of a blood clot in the lungs. Um, so we've got that. We've not unlocked that yet, so we won't see that at the moment. Um, and then you also have a uh, myocardial infarction, which is where the blood clot is in the heart and preventing the blood flow to the heart from working correctly. Um, so yeah, blood clots are dangerous things. Um, peachy. All right, okay. So I'll, I'll do my hour schedule of this, which is reanimation ink. I, I, I always keep calling this the wrong thing. I usually keep calling it like resuscitation ink or the, or the ilk. Um, but yeah, it's reanimation ink. I'll do the hour of this and then once the hour is done, I will do some not rough. Why not? Do a longer stream than than normal. I'm starving. I'm missing my dinner, but you know, whatever. Anything to keep. <laughs> Aha! Chest pain. So we explored this right at the start. Um, patient feels bad with chest pain. Um, so the fact that they're conscious tells me it's not a cardiac arrest because it wouldn't be able to tell you <laughs> that they feel bad uh, if their heart stopped. Um, so as a result of that, we're thinking uh, myocardial infarction, uh, which is what we just discussed, having a um, blood clot in the hearty boy, uh, or angina. I can see already that their um, pain is in the weak end of things, so I'm probably not thinking angina. So we're going to look to the ECG and look for things out of place. And that is the classic sign of a um, uh, myocardial infarction. So you can see here you've got the P wave, roughly where my cursor is, the QR part of the wave is fine, but the ST complex is um, is quite badly deformed. Um, this, it's kind of all meshed into one thing. So that is a sign of a cardio, uh, uh, a heart attack, myocardial infarction. We're gonna go ahead and get some um, cannulation on the go. I'm a little bit worried that the pleth function is dropping quite a little bit. So what we're gonna do is we're going to give um, Herapin, um, which will help us bust the clot um, of myocardial infarction. You can see here actually the pleth function is really dropping down, so we're an incredible risk to this body at this time. So we're going to go ahead and give um, streptokinase uh, as well. We are in. Um, we're in ventricular. Um, tachycardia and actually we're almost progressing straight into um uh yeah we are in ventricular fibrillation just now uh, so we're going to charge the defib and get ready to try and um save <laughs> save this 
Okay. So their oxygenation is good. Okay, and we've got good strength back, so we've gone from fibrillation back into ventricular tachycardia, which is good. We've got good strength in the heart, so we're going to twat them good and proper with a defibrillator. While this is analyzing, we'll give two breaths, mechanical, but still in ventricular tachycardia, so we're going to continue with compressions. We're going to start, uh, we'll get this charging and we'll start administering some medications. Uh, we've administered medications to help bring them out of the blood, uh, the, to re help restore the blood clot. Um, but we need to now administer medications to help uh, deal with the fact that they are, um, you know, their heart's not actually currently beating. So we'll do two rescue breaths here. We'll fire up the defibrillator and give some adrenaline boys. We do have a return to non-sinus rhythm, but it is a return to rhythm. We're going to monitor their oxygenation um, and we're going to use this little bit of a breather to just uh, administer a little bit more uh, of the clot busting drug. So there's a drug there, the herapin prevents the clot from growing um, and then the, 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 I forget what it's called. Streptokinase um, helps reduce the clot back down. Um, so we're going to administer. So we've administered a second dose of the uh, the, the whatever it's called, strepsils, um, and we can see that for all the hard work that we've done, the pleth function does look to me like it's starting to slip back down a little. Oh, it's coming up again, actually. The sawtooth's not great. Oh, hello, but that's fine. We're at a hospital anyway, so. That was nice and easy. Myocardial infarction. We said done. Peachy. Cool. Well, I hope you like the increase in your medical knowledge. Just a reminder, because you guys don't get to see the warning messages that I get to see. Uh, anything showed in this game and anything I talk about um, should not be done or practiced in any way, shape or form without um, a proper... Uh, degree of medical training so for many things that's first aid training um, certainly CPR um, it's strongly encouraged that everyone learns how to do and you can do it on the instruction of a healthcare um, professional you can do that without having a first aid certificate and if you're ever in a situation where you need to do it we you know everyone strongly encourages you um, to do that, but certainly more complicated things that we talk about here, um, such as the puncture of the pleural cavity. Yeah, you don't want to be doing that without uh, adequate medical training, and that is way, way beyond basic first aid um, courses. Um, so I know how to do it in a video game setting. I am not qualified or competent to do it in real life, and nor are you unless you have the paperwork to back it up. So. Just bear that in mind for everything that you see here. Not that I expect anyone would be silly enough to try that, but you know, what ifs? It is what it is. Hmm. Actually, that was the that that was the exact um, that was the exact uh, screen telling you not to do what anything in this without proper training. Okay. So what we've got here is Emma Miller. She's female, 53 years old, um, and she has been attacked with a weapon. Unfortunate. Uh, she's got pain when breathing. We don't know what kind of weapon. Um, if it was a sharp weapon, we could be looking at puncture wounds. Specifically, um, could be looking at um, puncture of the pleural cavity causing pain when um, breathing uh, or damage to the lung. Um, cold sweat, pale skin tells me heavy bleeding. Um, the fact that pale skin is mentioned twice is actually a bit of a tell uh, that it's both internal bleeding uh, and normal bleeding. Also, they're vomiting blood. So, what we're going to do, we're going to yeet ourselves to hospital and we're going to deal with the blood loss. Let's go. Hospital actions. Venus access. Let's go. Uh, we're going to start a blood transfusion just because it's going to take some time to get the stuff on the go. Um, right. So what we want here is a blood clotting, a blood clotting agent to help try and prevent that. And then we're going to... Oh, crap. Not so good with the breathing, you boy. Um, we're going to um, sort the tournament key. I've actually done that in the wrong order because I forgot about it. Um, okay, 
So we've we've stopped the external bleeding by use of the tourniquet for some reason or other this game only has It's more about the act of what you do rather than specifically exactly where um, So we stopped the bleeding by use of a tourniquet and bandages which is which is the very correct course of action uh, We've also administered a blood clotting agent um, which is good. You can see here she's actually still chewing through blood, which is a bit of a problem. The fact that there's not full blood in circulation means the, hat, the heart is tachycardic, beating too quickly. Um, and the blood pressure, well, we stabilized it a bit, but when it was lower, the, the high, high um, heart rate, low pressure, indicative of an internal bleed. Um, we're going to give just a little bit of painkiller. Um, morphine and opiate can affect breathing and things, so unfortunately I'm going to tell you grit your teeth and bear. I don't actually know what Keratol is, I've never heard of it before, not a doctor. Um, oh, hello! Where's your breathing going? So, we remember now the pain uh, they had um, while they were breathing. Why is this... Whoa! Why is this blood dropping hard? Uh, right, okay, we're gonna give more blood clotting agent and we're gonna resume. Oh, no, that's not what I wanted. Yeah, okay, right, fine. So we'll do this, see if we can get a little bit of breath back. So I think what's now happening is we're getting into the territory where the pressure... Actually, I wonder if they're having potentially... An allergic reaction to one of the medications that we've given. Just in case that is an option... Uh, we have given adrenaline. Um, we are going to try an alternative because they seem to. They see okay. Yes, they don't have a lot of blood, uh, but they did seem to stop breathing before they started really running out of blood. Um, so we'll now try an alternative airway, but we're still not getting any oxygenation. Oh, hello, ventricular tachycardia. Let's go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five. We don't get through a full cycle because we're here at hospital. Cool. Peachy. Um, all right. So what that was, was uh, internal bleeding, external bleeding. Um, didn't have a traumatic brain injury. They were breathing by themselves for a while. Uh, I didn't... S uh, I think that's probably it, to be honest. Yeah, okay. So other than the fact that their heart had kind of gone a bit on the, on, on the risky side, um, yeah, we, we did everything right there. Cool. Peachy. All right, let's do one more, and we'll do some Notroth, which is the, the firefighty, simulatory boy a boy Right, okay, one more. I was gonna talk about something. What was it? Nope, I can't remember. Please, me, please. <laughs> ah, patient felt bad and has pains when breathing. Uh, possible? No pain. Aha, right, okay. So we can see here, um, the heart has good shaped it, but it looks a bit funny. So what we've got here is an atrial flutter. So the heart has four chambers, um, two for oxygenated blood, two for non-oxygenated blood, two atrial chambers, two ventrices, uh, ventricles um, on the bottom. Um, ventricular fibrillation is the big one, that is cardiac arrest. This is atrial fibrillation where the heart chambers at the top are um, fluttering. Um, now the heart can fill um, as a result of um, a lack of pressure from so basically the ventrices contract and all the blood gets pumped out and the heart resets so it expand it basically expands back out and because there's no um, there's nothing inside it and it's expanded uh, there's there's lower pressure which means when the valves open um, the it, it can refill. Um, to a degree, and then when the atrium, atrial, uh, atrial chambers pump down into the ventricle, ven oh god, I can't speak. When it pumps downwards, um, basically what I'm saying is an uh, an atrial fibrillation 
means that the heart can still beat in an effective manner. You do still need to treat it, um, but the person isn't sparked out, harked it on the floor. Um, hence why you can tell they're conscious. And everything looks fine except, like, you know, the heart rate's fine, O2's fine, pleth function's fine, um, blood pressure is alright, the map, fine, uh, breathing rate, fine. Everything looks fine except for the shape of the heart. It is not normal sinus rhythm. Um, you still have a discernible um, RST complex. <laughs> Well, Q, Q, sorry, QR, yeah, RST, Jesus. You still have a discernible um, QRS complex, um, but the uh, P wave and T wave are hidden by noise, basically. Um, oh, we actually got a little bit of a glimpse of the U wave. You can see it right there under the cursor. It's apparently quite hard to see in real life. I wouldn't know, I've never done an ECG in a person. But now that we've administered, so the treatment for that is um, amiodarone. Um, which um, can be used to deal with ventricular fibrillation or atrial fibrillation, any kind of fibrillation basically. In the case of an atrial fibrillation, um, it steadies it, it steadies it. So you can see here we've now gone back to normal sinus rhythm. This patient is no longer in an emergency situation, um, so he can just get punted out the back of my ambulance done everything right and look at that it only took us two minutes to do that so we are uh, we've got enough time for one more your red boys will come mr apathy badger and mr last laugh again they will come oh hello ah okay fine um so basically this person has copd um they have pain when breathing and they have cough with um sp sputum um, which is basically you've got a dry cough and a wet cough. This patient has a, uh, a cough with, you know, delicious surprises coming up. COPD exacerbation is um, an emergency. So we are going to, uh, you, can see, you can see the heart's doing a wee bit of funky stuff. It's quite regularly actually, although it's for the most part in sinus rhythm. Um, so we want to do, uh, we want to give an injection of Ophil, Ophil, I don't know how to say that, um, which is a bronchodilator which basically helps relieve um, COPD. Um, so yeah, you can see with the oxygenation being quite low uh, that the heart is doing funky things on quite a regular basis, which I'm not happy about. And this is why an exacerbation of COPD can, uh, well, it is an emergency situation that usually requires people to go to the hospital. Boy, oh hi. Um, so by giving the bronchodilators um, the... Um, uh, the lungs are now able to take in air to their fullest extent. You can see the pleth function is now back to hitting 100%. Oxygenation is quite high. Probably actually unrealistically high for somebody who has COPD. But once again, this is a game. It is what it is. I'm happy with the resp rate, the breathing rate. Um, the blood pressure is fine. Perhaps a little bit variable. But um, pulse pressure of 40, which is fine. What age are they? That's, that's not an age. 52, yeah, fine. It's reasonable for somebody of their age. Um, hearts and sinus rhythm with a, with a normal heart rate. So we're only a minute away from hospital. Peachy. So we'll do this. Okay, fine. So anyway, um, let's wrap up. So this has been the first of kind of regular programming, if you will, uh, of um, of uh, Reanimation Inc. It's a game that I quite like. There's enough variability in it to keep it kind of, you know, for fresh. Uh, and I actually still have one more tier of education to go before I'm uh, doing, doing the full thing. Okay. Um, so... What we're going to do, we're going to be finishing up this momentarily and we're going to be doing a little bit of Notroth 112 for which I am going to take a bark break. Um, and so, and I know what the answer to this is going to be. 
I, I can guarantee you I know what the answer to this is going to be. But um, I'm, I'm going to trial a new thing where, like, if I have to decide... Uh, basically, I, I have myself a Wheel of Fortune, um, which tells me what the next stream is going to be, because I, I'm not all about streaming the same game constantly. I, I, I wrote myself into a niche. Uh, before and I'm quite keen for that not to happen again so I, I've set up a system a wheel of fortune to see what I'm going to stream next and in order to get that wheel of fortune started I want you all to give me a number in the comments there's four people watching if we can get one number that will be good and then basically after we do a little bit of not off um, we will uh, we will see what the next stream is going to be peachy okay